2010, uh, and web developer. So, and I like bunnies. <laughs> Snapchat, come on. <laughs> so, before we start all of this, we're like, okay, let's look at the old site. Let's see what is not working, you know? Um, we looked through the technology, we like dove into user experience, dove into the editor experience, and kind of identified these pain points. We just felt like the information architecture was a little confusing. We found users were not able to find things we really wanted them to find. Um, a lot of those user interfaces were just dated. Um, they just weren't really working. So we wanted to update that as well. We found that the editor workflow was pretty confusing, really complex. Um, it was sort of pieced together over a couple iterations of going from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7. So we kind of wanted to clean all that out and kind of start anew. And then there was a lot of custom code from those different iterations that were really out there. Um, anytime we try to hand this site to anybody to work on, they would take a lot of time just trying to figure out like, where is everything coming from? How does it work? Where do I find that little checkbox, right? So we wanted to kind of simplify that. So rising to the top. <clears throat> so after doing user testing surveys and heuristic review of the site, we try to identify like what's really working. Why can't people find stuff? Um, and here's some of the things that we decided we wanted to change. So there's, like I said, there was a lot of interfaces that just were confusing. We wanted to get rid of those. We wanted to redesign them, reorganize them so people could find stuff. We wanted to take a lot of that content and really make sure that people could find it. So we wanted to highlight it better on our landing pages instead of hiding it. Uh, we wanted to take some of the content that was on the site that we just felt like it doesn't really belong on our main EDU website. It really belongs to other places. So we want to move that stuff off. Um, then our, our editors were already using taxonomies. So we wanted to leverage those to expose more ways of kind of slicing and dicing information for our users and for our editors. Here's an example of hidden in plain view. So we had a lot of these um, horizontal tabs happening across the site. And users were really confused by them. Some of them didn't even look like tabs, like the one on the right, don't even really look like tabs. So we found that users actually weren't clicking on them at all. So we wanted to like get rid of that, get rid of that user interface because it just wasn't working. Um, example of how we wanted to feature stuff. So UCSF has wonderful photography, like gorgeous, gorgeous photography that we just really weren't using, we weren't highlighting very well. So we wanted to bring that up to help lead the user around the site, get them to the content we wanted them to get to. Oop. Never mind that. Dude, where's my site? Yeah, yeah. so this is a little segue about the project. Uh, one of the things that we had on the old UCSF website was an A to Z list. And that A to Z list had uh, essentially a list of pretty much it was supposed to have a list of all the sites that UCSF encompasses. Um, and this was, this was a project that was kind of like partially maintained and the list didn't include every site that UCSF had and or the, there were sites on there that were listed that were private sites that really shouldn't have been listed there. So we really needed to clean this up. So we had data in two places and um, we had a data set that was more of like a global list um, that we wanted to use and that was hosted on ServiceNow, which is like a, I don't know what you call it. It's like an IT management portal system. So we wanted to get all the data over to ServiceNow. Um, so what did we do? We, we basically established ServiceNow as the de facto standard for basically this, this list of websites. And then uh, Stan, actually, that uh, works at UCSF, he helped work on an attestation process, which is to ensure that the site owners made sure that the information that they had entered in the ServiceNow made sense. And then we used feeds to basically take that ServiceNow data, import it back into Drupal, and, and then um, present it in a, in a more stylistic fashion. Um, it was just like a long list of, of stuff before. So, um, and then I found the service, I, I was gonna build my own thumbnail 
thing and then I just decided, you know what, that's gonna take a long time. <laughs> Have you ever built anything where you're trying to get pictures off the internet? It can be pretty difficult. So Thumb.io is a great service, it's super cheap and it'll take full screenshots of your website. And then basically we moved this list, we decided it didn't really make sense to host it on www.ucsf.edu. So we moved it to websites.ucsf.edu. And this is the old list. You can see it's pretty basic. Um, listing of all the websites and a way to search and filter by alphabetical. And this is the new site. And you can see that you know each, um, each site gets its own little uh, thumbnail. And it tells you what division of the, the school it's in. And um, you also get the, the traditional filtering. And Can Jason, take it away. Can I just sit? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just worried about the audio. That's all right, I'll get in close. Okay. And I project, trust me, my voice carries. All right, so leveraging our taxonomy. So the, the editors are already um, <clears throat> categorizing the content with some topics and other tags. So we wanted to expose that to the user. It's like, since you're already doing it, let's let the user use it, you know? So this on the right is a, a widget that we developed that the user, uh, the, the editors can say, here is a featured topic. I really want that to be in this carousel so that people can find it on the homepage on some of the other landing pages. Here are our actual um, new taxonomy pages, which are incredibly rich with content. We gave editors the ability to add events to it, to add different kind of um, featured promo boxes. <clears throat> and then it pulls in already tagged um, content, which is mainly our news. Design to the rescue. So after we did all this review and did all this discovery, we wanted a nice design. So we hired Huge Inc. to come in and help us to just really make all these ideas we have, all this information architecture, our new sort of ways of slicing and dicing information, how to kind of bring that all together and make it look polished and feature all that great photography we had. So under there are some of the design comps. So breaking the boundaries. So I'm actually gonna demo this, but I just wanted to show sort of side by side really quick. Like this is what the article used to look like. And now we have these sort of more magazine layouts that we're doing that kind of break those boundaries. So demo, let's all pray, it works. <laughs> <laughs> So I thought I would just kind of scroll through this. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And it's hard, but I hate this thing on the top. Is that you can't get to anything. <laughs> so here's the old site. Um, it's pretty static, uh, pretty small type, um, very dynamic, we didn't feel. Um, so lunch, lunch, yeah, lunch, and there's a lot of sort of, page. there's a lot of wasted space we felt. And, you know, some of this stuff in the bottom kind of got lost. So in the new site, which I have to scroll up, so we really feature like that giant, gorgeous image. Um, give sort of some intersections to make uh, it more interesting for the user, give a little bit more of a magazine layout, really made new call out boxes that you felt didn't really interrupt the reading process broke the boundaries with the photography, brought up the sizes of them, um, just kind of make it easier, make it more fun, more dynamic, more interesting for the user. And then at the end, we actually, see, breaking all those boundaries, um, we started adding in these topics. So this really wasn't there necessarily before. We just wanted to pull out like, here are the topic pages you can actually visit now. Uh, and then bring out recommended rating and some other promos. Back to this, all right. About it. Okay, that was a good demo. Yay. <laughs> Woohoo. Okay, there's one more. Um, so we wanted to give our editors the ability to and control over their 
content or their layouts or everything like that. So during that sort of discovery phase where we were looking at the information architecture, we were thinking about the design, and we were really engaging with the editors and asking them, what do you want? What do you need? So we built a prototype, and then when we got the designs, we immediately threw out that prototype because we found the designs were pretty complex. Um, but even though we had these complex designs, we really wanted to simplify everything. We wanted to get rid of all these extra content types, all the stuff that was just carried over after each iteration. It was almost like they're building a building on top of a building. It's kind of crazy. Um, we also wanted to give them a lot of design patterns that they could reuse. We wanted to give them a system so that they could extend those patterns really easily. We wanted to give them those flexible layouts because editors really wanted to have the ability to add like three columns of this, add two columns of this, add a 30, 70 of that. And then our media handling. <laughs> So on our old site, it was really cobbled together. Some of our pages, the editors couldn't edit, so if they hit edit, it would crash the whole site. So we wanted to give them a, a more uniform way of editing, mm -hmm. of um, handling media. Tear down the wall. So we simplified our content a lot. In the old site, we went from 24 content types down to only nine. Um, we did go up in taxonomies because we wanted to leverage those taxonomies so that we could expose more to the users and also give the editors ways of slicing and dicing the, the information in the back end um, that wouldn't be even shown to the users. So our taxonomies did go up a little bit. Use that round in the square peg. So editors on the old site were really having difficulty just giving the users to highlight our, their content the way they wanted to. They really wanted this flexibility <laughs> of layout. So through our discovery, we just tried uh, several different things to, to achieve that. And at the time, that new layout um, uh, builder <laughs> in D8 wasn't even ready. Um, we reviewed some other ways of doing it using sort of drop down taxonomies to say if it's a left or right, but we really just ended up in paragraphs because we only knew, we knew we only wanted just a few simple layouts, so we went into paragraphs. We knew we wanted just a few um, design patterns that we could extend, so we decided that paragraphs was the best solution for that. So our editors, they're pretty amazing. They're really, um, they're really tech savvy. So we felt that this paragraph style would really work for them because they could just easily drop down a list and say, I'd like an even row. And I know I can put up to four of them and it'll be even. Here's these two different columns you can use. So pretty savvy. Liberal media, not fake news. So we have, yeah, over 26,000 media files on our site. And we moved a lot of them over because editors wanted everything, of course. So we wanted to give them a way that they could tag it, search it and stuff. So we gave them an interface so they can search on the title of it, they can search on tagging. So as they start uploading and adding more media to the site, we gave them ways to tag it so they can start classifying their own content. Another demo. <laughs> I just wanted to show you the user interface really quick. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to add go with page. Sorry, the internet's out of the video slow. Sad demo page. Oh, look, I restarted it. So we'll add an image. So See, we get this nice, this is all media, by the way, inside of G8 at this point. And you can extend it, you can add, it's buildable, it's an entity at this point. So you can upload an image, you can look at my library, which is just the stuff that I've uploaded, or you can look at everything that everyone's uploaded. Um, and these are just the images. We have like almost 10,000 just images. And we might actually have more because this is an old <laughs> version of the database. So then I'll just upload something. Banner image, browse, I got that one. It's good. And then we can start adding um, tags. So topics actually matches to our actual topics. That doesn't change, that's pretty locked in. We wanted to give them a free form tag so they could just put whatever they want in there. So if they wanted to put, you know, promos. They'll start looking for it. I'm like, ah, oh, it's like, yeah, graphic promo. Let's let's do that. 
We'll save that. We can insert it, and then we'll put a little. Do you guys like bacon ipsum? Because I love bacon ipsum. <laughs> It's so much. It's so much more fun than just lorem ipsum. But put in a little information there. So here's where we get into our paragraphs. So as you can see, we give them layout paragraphs. We also give them actual design um, components, such as the gallery, that vertical tabs, alert, and such. So I'm just going to do a quick like even row. We give them a, if they want a background because uh, these are basically rows of content. Sometimes they wanted to have a great background and kind of differentiate it between each of the sections. So we gave them that ability. We give them the ability to remove the top space. This is kind of after the fact because we found out as they started using it, sometimes they didn't want all that space in between those. They wanted it to seem like a three row and a two row were part of the same piece. So we gave them that ability. I'm just going to say. You're just like Same. moving the spacing between the, yeah. the different paragraphs together. So I'm going to add a content block here, more of that bacon. And then I'm going to add another column. So basically, you can start adding in columns and give the editors a little bit more you know, control over their stuff. Add another one there, and then add another column. And then finally, I'm going to add a promo so you can kind of see what the promo looks like. More back image. Me. We're using taxonomies to actually give color for the background, just so that we can extend it later. And then we have the same sort of interface for uploading my library and such. I'm actually going to go in and search for something. I know it's a, maybe a promo card, I think. Let's search. Ah, there's one. Bacon. Cross our fingers. Let's hope this works. Got to go on the URL. Dang it. <laughs> See this? I had praying hands. Does anyone else use Google way too much for, <laughs> for stuff I do? Okay. Let's save that and see what we got. I'm sure your code is not working. Oh, there it is. Bing. So here's the page I just created. We have a promo box, so three up. Back to our presentation. On the, oh, I'm Dana. I work with these guys. Okay. Uh, a note on the media. The reason why that media system was so important for this project is that there are multiple editors that work on any article. And the, their work practices is to just start jamming images onto the article. Yeah before it goes down to final review. And then they often need to recall that one that they decided they didn't want to use earlier because someone else thinks that it needs to go on the article. So in the past, that's why um, the articles would break because there was just so many high density images attached to an article, that the page weight, like the system just broke. So yeah, it was trying to load like <laughs> mega megabytes of images. Or it was actually files. using the, uh, there's a module I think it's just called insert. Oh, and yeah. it was inserting full size it was inserting full size images into the module display. So instead of using like a, a reduced image style to display like the previews, it was loading like 100 megabyte files mm -hmm. right into the page mm -hmm. and causing errors. <laughs> so now they have an extensible solution that's a lot easier for the whole team to use. If they're using that tagging now, it's yeah. working a lot better for them. And tell you the truth, they, at first they kind of they fought us. <laughs> yeah, they <did. laughs> they're like, no, we want our old thing. And so we really had to build this out, put in information, demo it to them, let them use it for a while to see like this is how this is why this is beneficial to you, because you we give you ways of searching stuff and not you know crashing the site over and over again. <laughs> yeah. It's my so turn. Yeah, it's on you. Do, you. do you want to switch with me? Sure. Uh, so some of the uh, some of the other things that we, we needed to do. Um, were, you know, we had some goals uh, set aside for this project. Um, first, you know, partially we wanted to be on Drupal 8. Um, you know, Drupal 7 will eventually be retired and we don't want to have to uh, rush to get a new site out on, on, on new, new technology later. Um, plus we wanted to reduce the complexity. So cut down on modules, cut down on custom code, 
leverage twig, um, you know, make the site faster. So these were all kind of goals that we had in mind for this project. Um, so eight is more than seven. Um, so <laughs> the old site, you know, was a complicated beast. Uh, we had 31 custom modules that we wrote. Uh, we had 306 uh, contrib modules or core modules enabled on the site. We had over 15 pre-process functions on the site. Um, it was just a really complicated site. Uh, we had this mega menu that I guess took like months to build and it was all written in JavaScript and it didn't use the templating layer at all. And so it, it wasn't customizable. The editors couldn't actually add uh, information to it. Um, they'd have to come to the developers to, to build out something new. So, um, you know, these are all things that we need to fix. Um, so in doing so, um, in building out the site super fast, of course we leveraged um, configuration management. It was extremely helpful because instead of having to go into features, build features, test your feature, export all the little things that are associated with your feature, put that up on the site, enable the feature, we could just kind of do it fluidly. We could just keep iterating and keep iterating. And we had kind of a weird iteration process locally. Jason would work locally, I would work locally, Austin would work locally, and we would all work on our little things. And then we would basically say, okay, I'm gonna export my feature, my, my config management. And then we'd basically take turns basically importing that config management onto the live site. And there are some challenges around config management still, but overall, I think it saved us a lot, a lot of time. Well, who here has used features? Okay. Who here has had like some weird thing not be in features and you can't figure out why? <laughs> <laughs> Config management is way better. It doesn't leave those little artifacts. You're like, why isn't this in, why can't I put this in features? Right. I need another module to even put this in features. <laughs> Yeah, so I, th I think that really helped out. Um, I don't think we could have actually built the site in the amount of time we did without, without configuration management. Um, and then to Jason's comments earlier, uh, median core, um, you know, it took a while to get there. Uh, we actually started this project before 8.5, and I think media and core started around 8.5. Yeah, it was very wrong. So, you know, it took a while to get there, but by the time we were ready to release the project, um, it was good enough and we can get all the things that we needed done done um, and that made you know the the content easily searchable and discoverable and it allowed that editorial team to find the things that they were looking for and then we really wanted to rely on twig Your twig is a very powerful um, templating engine and it has a lot of nice features um, still pretty difficult to use I would say um there's some you know i think i think it's uh when, when you first start with it it's, mm -hmm. it is learning new syntaxes it's learning where things are and triple has some weird weird ideas where things are sometimes. right you know? <laughs> i think overall dealing with the render arrays and understanding the scope of render arrays can be a challenge even in the old old version of drupal and um, I was thinking that was going to get improved, but it, it didn't really get changed all that much, unfortunately. Maybe Drupal 9 will, will finally make that an easier thing <laughs> to work with. <laughs> so it, we, we definitely relied on Twig a lot more. Pretty much everything that we could do in the, twi in the theme layer, we did in the theme layer. Um, talking about that mega menu from the past. Um, now, if an uh, editor editorial person wants to add a menu, they just go add the menu using the menu uh, system inside Drupal and it'll appear instantly. So that's, that's a great thing. And then in terms of um, performance, you know, we wanted to, to make the site as fast as possible. So we really used that responsive image set feature in Drupal 8. It's very complicated to get going. It takes a long very time to understand it and figure out, you know, how am I gonna use all these various images to, to create your image sets? And the, and the module gives you like so many options. Like you can do it with like, 
you know, um, what do they call the media queries? You could specify a little like the media query for the thing, or you can specify like a two X or a one X or a, a one and a half X. Uh, there's just a lot of different options. So it was, it took us a while to decide how are we going to use the responsive image set feature. But once we did figure that out, then it was basically, it was just plugging in, plugging in, <laughs> plugging in all. But once it's there, it works great. Set it and forget it. Right. And uh, another thing that we did is we used uh, a lazy loading module. We actually tried two. Um, there's one called Blazy, which um, I think a lot of people use, but it, it seemed like it was really complicated to, to integrate into a site that was already working and functional. And there were a lot of configuration changes that you had to have made in order for Blazy to work. There was another module, I think, just called Lazy Loader. And that was really quick. And basically, any images that are off screen aren't loaded. And once they come into this, uh, come into view, they load up. And I, I really wanted to test this. So one of the things I did is um, I created like a, an animated GIF. And I put that animated GIF as like the default loader thing. And then um, in Chrome, you can basically set your throttling. You could pretend like you're on a 2G phone network or 1G phone network. And then you can actually navigate the site up and down. And you can see that little loader go. And you can see the pictures coming in like one by one really slowly. And you know, you're guaranteeing like, yes, this, this component is, is working. Because if you're on a really fast network, you won't even see it. It's like invisible to you. Like those pictures are already there before you, before you can tell. Um, so the other great thing about Drupal 8 is it took a lot less modules. It took a lot less customization to make things happen. So on our old site, we had 275 contrib modules. The new site, we basically cut that in half, 144. Um, 31 custom modules in the old site, 10 custom modules in the new site. And a lot of those modules were very uh, UCSF specific. So like we had search integrations with other, um, with other websites, like the websites.ucsf.edu. Um, we had CK editor modules that we had built previously and we needed to port those over. So those were all really necessary modules that we brought in. And then um, custom hooks. You know, we still have a couple custom hooks, but the custom hooks that we do have in D8 are a lot simpler. Uh, the old custom hooks, we had over a thousand lines of code for one custom hook on the old site. Um, so in terms of um, reducing scope, you know, we, we made the site easier for anybody maintaining the site, for us and for third parties. We reduced the barrier of entry for developers. Um, we had a lot of people working on the old site, as we said, uh, that came in and they just couldn't figure out where something was, or they didn't understand how the components fit together. And it was just because we had so many complicated. We couldn't. I yeah. remember <laughs> spending hours going, where is this where, coming from? Right. So we just made it you know, much easier. And then uh, to make things peppier, you know, obviously less code equals less load. So, um, and then uh, some of the other things that we made improvements on is the old site actually made use of um, uh, node queue quite a bit. And the node queue was actually for, um, we had a whole bunch of masonry uh, layouts yeah, on the site. Other, other things too. And it just, we were trying to, to move things that we felt were display out of the database and into that display layer. So getting rid of panels, um, getting rid of unnecessary views that we just didn't really need anymore because we were able to query the database ourselves or query that page or query that taxonomy term ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely like axing those node queues. Yeah, and actually uh, moving things out of views into just the twig layer uh, actually it was makes so much faster. Much easier to do. Yeah. Uh, and another benefit of using D8 um, kind of out of the box uh, was there was a lot more things going on semantically. 
Um, so, you know, the themes that are built into D8, they're more semantic. Um, as you saw in his presentation earlier, um, in the media module, they kind of force you to put in alt tags. So, um, in, in terms of building in accessibility for the editorial teams, you're really kind of forcing people to like think about your, your accessibility. Um, web forms are improved. You get inline error messages if you need to. Um, so how do we do? Um, our, our old site, we, we use a, a tool called Site Improve. And it's a commercial tool. It's actually being used by a whole bunch of uh, universities, UC, actually. Yeah. 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 And this, this tool basically tells you, you know, errors and, and um, issues with your site. So the old sites um, had 44 errors on it. I don't really know in terms of the accessibility errors what those were primarily. Yeah, it's 2.0. Okay. AA. Right, so we cut that down to six, warnings down to 26, and contrast issues down to four. So we really, even without trying, because we really didn't honestly have any time to deal with accessibility. Well, we built it into the design. I mean, yeah. while I was there, and we were all over there making sure that when we were building it, we were thinking about accessibility. But when you're building such a complex site <laughs> with dynamic content, you obviously miss stuff. So, and then just to go back to um, the speed uh, of the site, uh, lazy loading really helps. Um, getting those uh, images into the appropriate size, getting like if you're on a mobile device, you only serve the mobile sized versions of the images. That really, really, really helped with the speed. Um, so, you know, creating those image sets and uh, offloading the images, and then we have multiple layers of caching. And this can be somewhat problematic for editorial departments because uh, they won't see their changes right away. But between um, you know the memcache layer, that's all um, the the built-in like big pipes uh, caching in Drupal, and uh, our Cloudflare layer, um, there's a lot of caching going on. So it's it's really quite fast. Um, and in the future, there's room to grow. We can still cut back on our JavaScript dependencies. There's a, actually some Polymer components that we're using on the site, and we can eliminate those and now cut down on the, the JavaScript load. Uh, we have a lot of fonts on the site, uh, a little too many fonts. And so we're looking into refactoring those font sets, cutting them back to what actually we need for the site. And that should hopefully make, make those fonts load much faster. Yeah, well, that's really, I want to speak to that really quick. Um, okay. It's because we did want these sort of magazine layouts and our editors know the difference between Helvetica Noia that's been bolded and Helvetica Noia that's actually bold. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why we're loading so many fonts, because we're loading you know, most of the variations of Helvetica Noia. And then Grandin, which is our display. And font awesome. Awesome, yeah, awesome is awesome. It is awesome. Um, and we could, uh, we're not doing uh, CDN right now for images, but that's another option that we could do if we wanted to, to make that, you know, load images faster in the future. And there's probably some ways that we can optimize our view query, queries. I can't say that word. Yeah, uh, queries. Queries, yes. <laughs> They're pretty optimized. We really did also get rid of a lot of our views. We had, a, I, I don't even have the number, but it was a lot of views on the old site. And we just mm -hmm. didn't want to go there. and wanted to keep them very simple and not do a lot of complex um, joins and such. So, yep. so how do we do? Uh, we actually cut our average load time by 42%. So that's, that's great. Um, our load time used to be 6.32 seconds, and now we're at 3.65 seconds. It's not super duper fast. You know, it's not Google.com. But for a site of this caliber and with this many images and just the look of it, you know, it's, a, it's actually a pretty good improvement. And we could probably, you know, after some more optimizations, we can even make that a, bi a bigger thing. I heard from the editorial team just last night that it outperforms the New York Times. 
So uh, we'll take it. Yeah. yeah. It's also perceived loading, using that lazy loading and stuff that we do use for the image and such. Really, everything above the fold loads pretty fast. And then it's that, that those extra seconds are all the stuff below <laughs> slowly loading. Um, so yeah, perceived, it perceived it's pretty fast. It's lightning fast. So, you know, there's still work to do. Like, just because the site went live, you know, the editorial team wants more and more stuff. Um, the, the one challenge that we did have is getting the crop and focal point tools in the media. Um, part of that challenge is that the, the features are just not there yet in, in those tools. So, um, and then, you know, we can still make further you know, uh, design optimizations and, uh, and improvements. Uh, we still want to go and kind of improve the search uh, feature on the website and bring up kind of more weighted search results. So that's something that we're working on. And then um, we also want to improve the WYSIWYG functionality. Yeah, um, just add a few more whistles and bells that we can find the editors really would like. Mm -hmm. um, not necessary, but would like. So right. there's always improvement on that. And then finally, we, we, we plan on doing, um, improving the editor interface more, uh, usability and accessibility of it as well. We did launch this pretty quickly, and it's a very complex site, as you can see, with kind of um, intense magazine layouts. So doing that in HTML, CSS, JavaScript is a little difficult. So we didn't really have enough time to really polish up the editor interface. So right. our next initiative is really to go in there and make it just shine, make it shine give, give good spacing, make things more obvious. Um, but we wanted the editors to use it for a while so that we knew what changes we needed. So there's some rhyme to the reason. So that's it. Yeah. Anyone have, have any questions or comments? Questions? Sure. So you're talking about implementing the ways you load, and you did this only for images, and what about for the content? Uh, text text is always very small. I mean, it's a it's a very small portion of site content, so we didn't really think about that. Uh, yeah, and because yeah, our site is super sense. image heavy, that's going to make the largest, you know, uh, uh, I guess, uh, impact. impact on that. Yeah. yeah. We really, yeah, we focus on images because you can see it's a very image heavy site. Editors really wanted that magazine layout. They wanted that, like, aha moment when you come to a featured article that you, you know that it's featured, you know? Uh, so that's what we really focused on. Is we knew we were going to have giant, Two double sized images, like 2880 pixels mm -hmm. wide. So, we really want to focus on that. What was your ideal chroma speed when you were testing? Oh, I was doing 2G. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty slow. <laughs> so, um, do you guys have a pattern that you're using for the, for the designs? It's interesting you bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, we, we worked with Huge and they delivered. A design language to us and basically sort of five pages. Then working with UR, we had to finish up the rest of the site. And initially we thought, hey, let's do a pattern lab, you know, for a pattern library. We can break out components. This seems like a, an ideal candidate for it. So we really need to bring those things into an HTML prototype because we only got Zeppelin and sketch files from them. And we got a mobile and we got full desktop, nothing in between. So we just wanted to get it into code. But as we were looking at the deadlines and how much work that was, it just wasn't, it wasn't possible. I mean, we just didn't have enough man hours or enough help. So what we did is we actually used uh, Pattern Lab as our prototype. Mm -hmm. So we, I went and I built each of these pages and there's many different types of layouts. So I went and I actually built them all in code and used Pattern Lab to sort of display them. Also, so we could start testing our responsive in there. But yeah, we don't have a full pattern lab. It was just, it was just too much work. Yeah. And, and we didn't find that uh, in terms of like reusable components. Those didn't really work very well, especially with the complexity of the paragraphs and all the things that we're building in the, in the UI. Those patterns don't necessarily translate really well into usable twig. He means the twig. Right? Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 the twig. The, pattern, the patterns themselves are reusable, obviously, but the twig that 
pattern library generates yeah, doesn't gonna, actually generate it's be more important for us to integrate the pattern lab than just build it inside the lab, right. as we realized. So we kind of scrapped it early on in the project. Otherwise, we'd still be working on that pattern lab right now. Mm -hmm. But you're expecting other uh, other websites to use similar sure. yeah. sites or not? Well, this is our flagship site. So we have a pattern lab already, a pattern library for UCSF that people can use. This is all brand new stuff. So mm -hmm. taking that brand and extending it and pushing the boundaries is what university relations really wanted to do with the main property. Mm -hmm. So some of these things are just way too complex to hand off to somebody and go, here, make this sort of very magazine layout Hold and on. make it work across devices. Although there are people using our theme already and kind yeah, of tweaking it. actually, so, so there's a, a site that's going to be launched pretty soon that is piggybacked off this theme and it's tweaked it a little bit so that it's different enough that it isn't an exact copy because UR doesn't really want people to have an exact copy of UCSF.id. It's very special. Um, a lot of money, time, energy discovery went into it. So at some point, I'm sure we're going to extrapolate some of this and pull it back into our pattern library. Um, maybe even with our, our D8 site builder, like our offering, probably based on site plan. <laughs> well, uh, I think Carson. I'm sorry. Uh, the, um, are you getting some feedback on, on the usability of paragraphs in that, in that editing interface? Are you getting any kind of yeah, actually, so the editors, they love it. I mean, Sarah loves it. She loves the flexibility of able to, to put in what she wants, take it off, move it around. So when you have that paragraphs layout, you move it around. We definitely need to work a little bit on the usability of it yeah. um, and sort of highlighting things better, which is our next phase. But they seem to really like it. We made it as intuitive as possible so they do have drop down, you get this, you put this in, you put this in. So there's individual steps that are clear. Mm -hmm. uh, and at first we thought, oh gosh, we're going to overwhelm you. We're going to give you too much. And the first prototype that we built was way more robust than this because we were like, you can do whatever. I mean, you can just a blank page and do whatever you want in there. And we realized after getting the designs, that was way too much to ask. Uh, so then we broke it down into those individual nine content types to really sort of center on here, you put this in, and then you, this is your flexibility at layer. Our, well, our editors are very savvy. So um, I think if they weren't, then paragraphs would be a little bit more problematic. Uh, but knowing who's using the site and how to get there, we definitely. Yeah, and, and when we built the initial uh, prototype and kind of coming up with this idea, like this is how we're going to organize everything, this is going to be the user experience, we handed it over to them. And we didn't train them. We're just like, here, see what you can do. And even with these, when we were prototyping it initially, when we wrote up the spec, we wrote it with them, going, okay, this is what you need. This will be you know, required. This is how this is going to work. And then we literally just handed it to them and said, can you use it? <laughs> and they were. They did some wacky stuff, though, let me tell you. But, <laughs> but you know, it, it helped us find some of those pain points for sure. So, so what was the case size of your images that you were that you were needing to have the cost in order to build? What is the case? The, 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 the case size, the how, how, how many how many K was each image? Um in the truth they vary. We were trying to keep it under five hundred K. Just because those large um, when you work with retina, you always have to double size or triple size an image. You decided not to do triple sizing. You just thought that's that's a bit too much. Mm -hmm. Um because we're not going to 4K or even 5K now, uh, big screens. We're really just focusing on you know, what people are using. They're using laptops, they're using um, larger screens, not really large screens. And they're really using them some. So using that responsive, by the way, the responsive image, it's great. It's a, it is a pain to set up. So we had our own breakpoints. So first we had to establish our breakpoints, then bring that in, and then I literally sat there with JavaScript or maybe Illustrator, and I would like resize it so I know the exact like width and height of each of those, and then plug them all in, and it just the work for you, which is pretty cool. But yeah, we were aiming for 
for 500. Some of these images are pretty big, pretty complex. But those are really only for like our really featured articles. So we thought, you know, if you're going to a featured article, you can wait a, a millisecond. You know? We were actually looking for a page weight of under three megabytes. Um, and with lazy loading, it's kind of like that because like <laughs> you're not loading all the images at once. So if you're, you're thinking about the first load, yeah, it's under three megabytes, but I don't think overall it's probably under three megabytes. That's one of the bigger ones. Um, have you had user feedback on that layout thing on the right side? Um, quick, quick, uh, quick links. Links. Yeah, um, yeah. we did. So we didn't see it when we actually load the page. There's a little bounce that happens mm -hmm. to bring people's attention. Because first we didn't have that. We just had quick links on the side, and people were missing it. But once we put that little animation in there, people were starting to see it. They're like, oh, hey, what's there? Click on it. So, For those of you that don't know, um, at UCSF, there we even were, a lot of people use the main property website for very stupid reasons, like trying to get to email and things that they shouldn't be doing. So the quick links is our way to address that concern, where we could give them um, all the sort of like in, in okay, ready? stuff that we need access to. Um, on my logo without machine. disrupting like the, the experience. It kind of bounces. <laughs> yeah. People are looking for the medical center, things like that. You can't see it. Yeah, it's 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 oh, um, <laughs> you can't see that? Because <laughs> it's off the side. That's there off the side. The side. So there we go. Okay. And it works better when you're not logged into the site, but. Yeah. It's it's little... unload. It bounces. Yeah, you'll see it. Yeah. It bounces a little bit. <laughs> it kind of sweeps in, gives a little like little teaser. And it kind of there? Kind of pops out of you, all over it. We just couldn't really think of a. a I mean, that's a really oh, difficult so area, and it took us a while to kind of figure this out. And there's quite a bit of sites that use this sort of drawer um, sweeping out, so we felt pretty confident that people would use it. And the user testing, people found it, especially when we put that little bounce in there. I was like, oh. You know, we're hunting and gathering. We're looking for movement. So, is that standardized across all of your sites? Or, they have the, or, or will, do you do you intend that it will be? Yes. Or, okay. And do you expect people to be able to change that that particular metaphor? No. But we have a the follow-on project from this is a new, new global super nav that will have a similar drawer capability to this, okay. but it'll be duct, uh, duct into the top. Okay. Blue, blue, blue yeah. So for this property, the only thing that's up there is our get button. And that's it. But for all other UCSF sites, there's going to be a new local supermarket. Is that going to be, is that standardized in that the, the, the links in there are going to be identical by, by policy or whatever, or are you going to let people actually change the links? No, no. There's a whole governance thing that's. I was wondering about that. So, uh, yeah. Central repository. There, it's intended to be standardized. There's an exception process so that people can apply to because we have some characters that need. To do their things, so. right. but for this quick links, I mean, this is only on the home page. We yeah. found people land on the home page and they were looking for certain That's stuff. Yeah. It's not on every other page yeah. of the site. It's just as soon as you go off to another page, um, yeah, it's, it's just on the first one because it is set as the default home page on campus, right? Yeah, and we found when people came into. Uh, a landing page or an internal page, they were coming from a search or from a click somewhere. <coughs> um, people that are coming to the home page, they're usually they're hunting for something. I mean, we wanted to give internal people a way to get stuff quickly, but also address maybe our external audience. Any more?